we are teaching our children how not to live. Dumping experiences on a child, dumping objects on a child, filling their rooms up with all kinds of strange things. So they're so confused with all that matter around that they don't know anymore what is up and what is down and what are they and where do they begin and end. Presence of the parents better than presence. I was uh, thinking a lot about how to educate, in a way, raise children that are more connected, just simply grow naturally. I have a, a nephew and I'm trying to do it with him. The question is if to speak with a child like how we speak now, like that he's an instrument, the truth. Definitely and absolutely. The more you raise that child to have the confidence that there is an Antar Guru, there is an Antar Atman and that it is not alone and that it can always go there with a question it has. The stronger that child is, the more centered, the more secure and the less egoistic. But it's also important to teach children to bend, you know, to try to import those approaches from the subcontinent of not just the subcontinent, you know, to bend to touch the feet of the parents for blessings, or that the parents on the birthdays of the children touch the children's feet, ask for forgiveness for any mistake they have done in the year prior. This is inculcating surrender in your children. It's inculcating the ability to bend. Otherwise, where? do they learn how to bend? Where do they learn humility? How? It's a... it's a... it's a takeover of i in the whole world. To the point where now the declaration is, I am the soul. That has become the... en courant declaration all over the world of spiritual seekers. I am the soul. I am. No, you're not. You are the body, in surrender to the soul, an instrument of the soul. But you can't know that because you're not learning how to bend. So that's where the child has to be taught humility. It has to be taught to live with as little as possible. It has to be given as few toys as possible, not as many. As few external experiences as possible and as many internal experiences as possible. Seriously, 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 you raise a child then to be independent, to be independent of objects, to be independent of, of experiences that have to be run after and sought after greedily. If you take a child out skiing three times a year as this big experience, after that, it needs that experience to feel alive. I'm giving skiing as an example. It's not just skiing, then it's... What else? Riding. Riding, horse riding. You're sitting on an animal and riding it, okay. It's skiing, it's then horse riding, then it's going to the Europa Park, it's, it's going to Disneyland, it's going this and that and that and that. And finally, its life is made up of experiences external to itself. And people say, well, if I don't expose my child to all of that, then this child will be stunted culturally. No, it won't. It won't. It'll be powerful culturally because it'll be one of the few children that is there with itself, it's capable of just being with itself. Like, you know, when you go to the villages, even in Europe, in small villages, sometimes you just see people just sitting like this. They're just there sitting on a... on a... on a... 
bench or something in the village, just sort of there. It's called living. And we are teaching our children how not to live. Dumping experiences on a child, dumping objects on a child, filling their rooms up with all kinds of strange things. So they're so confused with all that matter around that they don't know anymore what is up and what is down and what are they and where do they begin and end. Presence of the parents better than presence. No sugar. Talk to them about the Divine within and how they bend to its impulse. Teach them how to distinguish between the loud voice of the ego and the quiet truth within themselves. Show them that they have access to the truth, that they will know what is the right thing to do without being constantly hounded about it. That's how it's done. Of course you have to keep on hounding them about that, but then better to hound them about that than about many other things. And you do succeed with children, we've seen that. They're quite, kind of quite okay. Look at that exhibit B over there. He, he was, how old were you when your parents started practicing, so-called practicing these things? Five or around five. So he's quite okay, I mean, he, I think. <laughs> I mean, he's a normal kid, he goes to school, he goes to, or now he's finished school and he has girlfriends and sorry, I'm telling the truths about your life. But it's already been spoken about, so I have the right to say that. It's just a normal kid, but he's centered. He, he's, he knows something, there is some level of confidence there about living and life. And his parents, of course, didn't really listen to what I said, so that's another story. <laughs> We are observing this with children. No sugar. Firstly, no sugar. If you can't do anything else, just don't give them sugar. Just take it out of the house. Close down sugar forever. That will already change a lot. And talk to them about the Divine within, the Antar Guru. Or you can call it in your language, the Antar Teacher, Inner Teacher, if you want. And when the child is small, starting to react to his name and to understand that he is a sep kind of separate unity, so actually the name also helps him in a way to get this identity that he is the name. Is it possible to start from this age already to um, that he will not identify? Um, you understand what I mean? To use a name with a child is not generally done in ancient cultures. They figured out that if you use the name too fast and too often with a child, that it hardens that identity. It's hard as an identity? Yes, so it's better to start that process slowly. Yeah. In fact, like here in, in India, when a child is born, there is no obligation to give a name to the child immediately. Sometimes they used to wait six months to one year to do that. Now they have some new imported ideas that it has to be done faster, but generally it was done like that. Mm -hmm. And then they even changed the name after a while if they felt it was not the right name. Thank you very much.